Good evening. Good evening. My name's Mark Hobson. I'm the managing director and founder of the live music venue and nightclub in Sheffield known as Corporation. God, I can't see this. Um, this section is entitled Don't Fall Off, during which I'll explain some of the numerous pitfalls that lay in wait for anyone daft enough to want to open their own place. Oh dear. Um, I returned to Sheffield at the age of 23 after four years in London and at the end of the miners strike with a geology degree in my hand and promptly decided to join the dole queue to the many other folk would find coal. An alternative was required so I, be um, I began to um, look into music. Uh, there was nothing in the nightclubs I was uh, going to so I decided to do it myself. Now there are two main reasons why established venues and clubs would overlook a music ra rising musical trend. The first is because, quite simply, there's nothing, it's nothing more than a fad. That looks better after you've held it there. <laughs> you may provoke the event successfully for months, but then they may all go. Um, if it does work, do it. And do it well. Build on it. Take it to other towns, cities, and enjoy it. The day will come around very quickly when you have to sit down on the stairs and decide if you're going to pursue this as a career or if it was just a bit of fun and it's now time to do something else. Now I'm lost. If you choose this as a career, then you, don't have, then you won't make a fortune, that's certain. If you want to do that, become a solicitor or a doctor, or anything really. This is a career that will pay the gas bill and feed the cat, but that's about it. If you want to have a family life, go and do something else. If you want to sleep at night, go and do something else. And if you don't cope well under pressure, definitely go and do something else. But if you decide that this is your direction, um, you will meet along the way many good friends, Oh dear, I'm a bit behind here. And you also uh, meet them from all around the world as well. Anyway, that's Sheffield, as you well, well know. It's also the largest village, but also another saving grace is its large occurrence of independent venues and uh, club operators. Unlike the high streets, with their 5,410 of them, with their very clone-like appearance. Right, we're on here now, are we? Okay. <laughs> But make sure you know where you're going with your venue. Make sure you know where the marketplace is. Even for the big fish out there, Sheffield has broken many large uh, leisure companies. I want to miss that bit out, I think. <laughs> I think you all know which ones they are. Uh, Pulse and Vogue came, Barfly came, and they uh, left around 2003. At this point, you might ask why the name Corporation. Well, the simple answer is Corporation was chosen because most of the major cities have a Corporation Street. You'll find them on manual covers. You'll find Corporation written there. And also the old term for Sheffield City Council is Sheffield Corporation. We prefer the Latin also. The foreshortening works very well. Right, we're there. Whoever well, provides the entertainment, there's one thing that this whole business goes around with. I'm ahead of myself now. And that's beer. <laughs> There are two ways to make it, uh, well, there's no two ways around it, that makes it work, that's how it goes around. However, following the 2003 licensing reform, bars, venues and pubs and nightclubs became the target of a concerted campaign to demonise alcohol. Late night trash TV began to uh, be dominated by police camera, drunk person, bad. Uh, and images of people enjoying themselves were replaced by folks sprawled out on the pavement after a night out. I'm not actually showing pictures of people strolled out on the pavement after a night out. I do apologise, I know I'm supposed to these days. I noticed a change when uh, we had about 1,200 people inside our building enjoying themselves and the city centre duty sergeant came to the front door of the venue asking, um, well, wanting to me have arrested for a, uh, attempted manslaughter and close the uh, venue down because I had two drunk students sat on the pavement. He never came in the venue and to this day I'm still not quite figured out what attempted manslaughter is. I really would love to know what number slide that is. <laughs> Never mind. But selling beer is not illegal. But if someone gets drunk on your premises, it is your fault. And even though you don't open their mouths and force them to drink it, you are responsible and you will be made to, take, uh, to hell to take into account. However, there is no test. You can't figure out where that person drank the beer. And also, the legal definition of drunk is jolly vague. I'm going to miss this next bit out as well, because to be perfectly frank, I'm going to definitely run out of time here. Uh, my personal opinion on drink, and this is my personal opinion, is that basically everything should be legal. That's my personal opinion. As long as you don't hurt the person next to you, you should be free to do and ingest whatever you want. You'll pay the consequences in the morning, obviously, but hey, that's how it goes. That is my personal opinion. Don't write that down. All well, late-night venues in the country require door stuff. Like that. That's Paul. Uh, they're here to sort of make sure we 
get on all right, have a good time. They do just to be, seem to be hanging around and not really doing a great deal. Um, but well, that's kind of the job, I suppose. But if you get the door staff wrong, and I did in the early days, you spend most of the time clearing up their mess. A poor door team can clear a venue just as quickly as a bad DJ. That happened to me in Leicester, and it was a hard lesson to learn. The door staff look after all the folk in there. Honest. Well, all right. there's probably a few people who will actually explain to me they don't. Uh, 2009, um, New Year's Eve, we had to retrieve a couple who'd actually been turned away from the front door from having no ID. They climbed the rickety drain pipe over the tin roof, and they were actually on the roof of the building, which is pretty good going in heels on December the 31st. We walked them out on ground floor level, uh, but the happy end to the story is they still got in anyway. I still don't know how they got in, but I was walking out, they were walking out past me, I don't know. They had a good time anyway. <laughs> That's the main thing. One of the many plus points of uh, getting to see this is an awful lot of bands we get to see. And for free. However, poor ticket sales, and you know when it's going bad. You're looking at the show and you're thinking, to break even, I need about 300 quid, a 300 pound ticket to see this band. It kind of hurts at that point. The other plus point is the 99% of musicians and bands who are just lovely folk. However, you do, I don't know, there's always 1%, I suppose. Danny Phil from Cradle of Phil threw down his radio mic in a storm and went off in a huff after a radio check. Ace Frehley, the former Kiss guitarist, began to blame his equipment and sound engineers for poor performance recently. I am really behind. Anyway, it was Jack Daniels that did that. Anyway, to conclude, running a venue in a nightclub is enjoyable. There's no two ways about it. We provide entertainment, but the far right, greater entertainment comes from watching folk enjoy themselves and from time to time making an arse of themselves. <laughs> <laughs>